Okay, I see Tish, all right. I'm going to guess that we have enough people to get this meeting going. Yes, we do. Yeah. All right, so um, I would like to say in accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting virtually. The cemetery committee is conducting this meeting March 2nd, 2002, 2022. Wow, 20 years off, that's really bad. Okay, 2022 at 4 p.m. Eastern time on the Zoom platform and in accordance with the town's policy directive and guidelines issued on April 1st, 2020 and amended on May 7th. If you are recognized, please state your name and address. And this meeting is being recorded. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, call to order in a minute, but I would just like to uh, quickly go over what, what this uh, schedule, uh, the agenda is so that um, people know what time they're queued up to speak. So we start off with a deed signing, a review of the calendar, approval of meeting of the minutes from the last meeting. And then we start the discussions uh, and possible actions uh, on the agenda. And they include the um, a public works uh, staff report, the Friends of Sleepy Hollow donation, uh, lot purchases, mausoleum concept plan review, landscape and ground cover, subcommittee presentation, a discussion of Warren articles uh, 46 and 47, uh, then committee uh, members uh, comments and then public comments and finally adjournment. So uh, that's what tonight's, uh, this afternoon's schedule is. And I will now uh, call to order. I, Leo Carroll, hereby call this meeting to order. All committee votes will be taken via roll call. We will start with an attendance roll call of committee members. When I announce your name, please reply. Brian Davidson. Here. Rebecca Purcell. Here. Rod Rydell. Here. Jerry Susi. Here. We have a full house tonight. This is great. Okay, so um, I think we should uh, next move on to the, uh, oh, with that, I call the meeting to order. Um, First thing is a deed signing. And I'd, I'd like to say that uh, Tish came by yesterday and I signed uh, the deed for February. Um, next item is a review of our calendar and uh, future proposed meeting dates. The proposal is for April 6, 2022. And I believe it'll still be in the same uh, format and at the same time. So uh, if that, doesn't work for someone, let us know. Otherwise, we'll assume that we can do it. Okay, roll call for approval. Brian Davidson. Uh, are we approving the meeting, uh, uh, Leo, the meeting. or are we going to approve the minutes? Approval of, oh, you know what? This is, you know, it's funny. Justine was making me look so good because I got the script in front of me and I still managed to jump ahead. Okay, so. <laughs> Good That's thing okay. we got you there, Brian, because you caught me red hand. Okay, so um, <laughs> well, well, Leo the has uh, the proposed dates uh, seem to be fine. No one disapproves. So let's go on to item A five: approval of the meeting minutes from February second, two thousand and twenty-two. So, so Leo, um, I make a motion to accept the minutes of February second, two thousand twenty-two, uh, as drafted. Hey, that's it great. Who seconded it? I second it. Okay, so let's do a roll call. Brian Davidson. Approved. Rebecca Purcell. Approved. Rod Rydell. Approved. Jerry Susi. Aye. Leo Carroll approved. Okay, we're already up to A5. This is great. Now, we go into the meet of tonight's meeting, the discussion and possible action items on the agenda. So. D1 is um, uh, the Concord Public Works Department uh, staff report, and there's no vote needed on this. Uh, oper operation and maintenance update. And Aaron, could you uh, take it? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Aaron McCloskey, Highway and Ground Superintendent. Um, so during the month of February, uh, it was a very busy month for, for the department. 
Um, we had a number of snow events. Uh, Tish did a great job opening up the cemetery as quickly as possible, following those. We had a couple of tight deadlines. We had some significant snowfalls and funerals right after. So uh, I got to commend Tish and uh, members of the Highway and Grounds team for, for getting the cemetery open and uh, accommodating those, those requests uh, immediately post storm. So thank you. Um, we did have two full grave um, lot sales uh, during the month. We had five full interments in February. A couple of updates for the projects that we're working on. Uh, received on Monday uh, the stone wall assessment report that was completed by Wright Pierce. Uh, it was contracted through our town's engineering division. So I'll be reviewing that uh, document over the next month and we'll be pre presenting the findings of that to the cemetery committee during our April meeting. Also, uh, Colin Barium, there's been discussions uh, between uh, my team and the, some, the, some of the engineering division, and they have some, some contracted resources that they might be able to work with to see if they can subcontract some uh, Colin Barium architect engineering firm to work with uh, the members of the cemetery Colin Barium subcommittee. So I'll have an update for the group next month on what a proposal from them would look like, um, and maybe ahead of that, um, they have some discussions with the cemetery subcommittee ahead of the next month's meeting. There is a, an agenda item tonight, the Forest Mausoleum Concept Plan Review. Um, we can, uh, I'll address that, but our group has been working on uh, reviewing some of those plans uh, prior to providing them this evening, and we'll continue to work on that project as well as it develops. Uh, Matt Tisch has been working with uh, Boston Scan on the mapping and with some of our uh, uh, engineers that have CAD capabilities on updating and finalizing those plans. Uh, the project obviously is taking longer than originally anticipated, but we hope to have it finalized here in the springtime. Um, Tish has done a great job, spent I don't know how many countless hours um, making sure that all those lots and those cards electronically are correct and all that information was transferred over um, as accurately as possible and updated the map. And so thanks again for all the time, Tish, uh, for spending on that project. We had a large oak tree come down uh, two weeks ago now. Uh, massive tree over in the, uh, just, uh, just south of Authors Ridge. I uh, came down, damaged four headstones. Um, Tish was there to respond with the crew and I uh, was able to clean up and remove the tree. Uh, could hardly tell he was even there to begin with and after it came down, but those stones will be repaired uh, for, for anybody that saw that or, or I know Leo was actually walking through the cemetery at the time and saw it uh, right after it happened, but the tree actually uprooted um, and, wow. and fell over. So thank you again for uh, getting that cleaned up so quickly. Finished. And that's pretty much all the all the updates from an operational standpoint that I have uh, for the group right now. Uh, Tish, do you have anything to add? Okay, well, thank you very much, Aaron. I'd, I'd also like to say that I did, um, you know, as Aaron mentioned, I happen to be walking by and this, uh, I'm gonna guess it's uh, close to 200 year old oak um, was uh, down on uh, Authors Ridge. And interestingly enough, it was directly in front of the oldest uh, gravestone in um, Authors Ridge. So my guess is it was probably planted there about the time the person was interred. So um, uh, it was unfortunate in that it was pretty much a, rotted out completely and a punky <laughs> ward. And there, were, there was no root system left to it, which quite surprised me. So we, you know, continue to see, um, you know, sadly, the, uh, the demise of that uh, first generation of, uh, of oak trees and um, other trees that were planted there. Uh, back in the 1850s and 1860s. So, okay, uh, moving on to our, and, and by the way, the, um, the tree was cleaned up within a matter of hours. I was very impressed with how quickly that was taken care of. So thank you, Aaron and Tish and the crew that did it. Leo, so, before, Leo, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you, but before you uh, continue, can I just ask Aaron one follow-up question about the, the four gravestones that were damaged, uh, you mentioned that they'll be repaired. Is that going to be folded into the gravestone repair program for this summer, or is that something that's separate and will just be repaired as a 
you know, something that's done on a, you know, an ad hoc basis. Yeah, I mean, both, Rod, um, I believe two of them, we're going to have the monument company just set them back upright. Um, and then two will need to be included with the, uh, the historic headstone restoration project. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that, you know, actually, Brian, that's a very good point. They, there were two different types of stones. There were the uh, older ones, which unfortunately got, got smashed and cracked. And then the newer ones were on a base and they just got knocked over. So it's a question of putting the, I, I think the stainless steel rods back in and then planting the top part on, which is a, a fairly, um, was an easier fix than, than the old stones. So, okay, so item D2, Friends of Sleepy Hollow Donation, Bollard Installation and Gate Proposal. We'll need, um, a motion and a second and a vote to recommend the gift acceptance uh, to the select board. So, uh, Kevin, God bless you. How are you tonight? Fine, thank you. How are you? My life's like a dream, brother. Everything is good. <laughs> so, are you uh, are you going to address the uh, gift from the friends? I will. Uh, my name is Kevin Thomas Plazik. I reside at 98 Baker Avenue in town, and I'm here. Uh, with uh, three of my uh, colleagues, board, board directors. Uh, one is not able to be here and the other is on his way north from a much warmer climate. So there are two items uh, that I would bring to your attention. One is uh, from your last meeting, uh, you wanted, the committee wanted to talk about uh, and to uh, hopefully assent to the uh, two giftings. Uh, Probably the easier one to take first is the one uh, of the Sleepy Hollow inscription on the uh, permanent uh, two-sided gates at uh, the Knoll. Uh, we're here to answer any questions about it. My understanding from Justine is that you've received uh, printed copies of the original proposals which were presented uh, online with you at the last meeting. So the, three of, the four of us are here to answer any questions about that and then I'd like to uh, briefly introduce the Bollard matter and then turn to my colleagues. Okay, so you, you want us now to discuss the uh, the gates? That would be, yeah, I, I think that would be easier first and then okay. we'll get onto the Bollards. All right, um, any, uh, any uh, points to be uh, brought up by the committee members? I guess I just had a question uh, last time. The finials uh, seem to be somewhat of a question. Just wondering if you had uh, any more uh, thoughts uh, on that aspect of the, uh, the project. I, I turn to Sylvia to answer that. Hi, uh, Sylvia Sawyer from Acton, Winter Street Acton. Um, so the finials, I think, can be a decision that can be made right at the end. I think that you know, if we go ahead and do the Sleepy Hollow Gate and then we stand back and look at it, it may just be that it's not needed. Mm. Um, I think we could have another vote at that point, whether we feel for some aesthetic reason or some balance or some authenticity, you want to add the finials, but it might not be necessary. Terrific, thank you. I looked at the report and it looked fantastic. So really uh, appreciate all your work uh, that you have all done. Okay. May, may I, may I Brian, just add you. that we sure. were going to try to have today a sample of the letter, actual size, but uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't have a chance to get it. But as soon as we do, we will show it to the committee. We'll pass it on to you and so you can take a look at it. Okay. I, I'm sorry for interrupting. No problem. And uh, I would just like to say, um, First of all, I'm going to apologize for my lack of mastery of the English language, but a finial, is that the little metal pieces that hang down at the bottom? No. Uh, I, I understood that um, Brian meant the finials that we were talking about on the gate posts. Is okay. there any finials? talk of, of doing the finials on the gate post or a, or a concrete ball yeah. um, or something like that? But I think that's... a that is a decision that can be made much later. Right. There was some okay. shown on the gates too. Pardon? There were some finials shown on the gates. There was a yes, a those are like little, they're like little flames that come down. If you look at the original picture of the gate, they're tiny little 
metal flames that come like little squiggles almost that come down underneath the wording so is that part of the proposal for right now um uh, yes like in the um so in the black and white drawing it's not there in the watercolor one it's there then we are considering doing those finial finials that it would be more of a representation of the original gate but Brian, I think you just meant the finials on the on the gate posts. Did I, did I get that right? It, that that's correct. So yeah, that my, that was my original question. Uh, on top of the gate, there was kind of a finial aspect to it that was trying to capture the old gate uh, a little bit. Uh, Are you referring to the stones that uh, were given to the Acton uh, Cemetery? Well, that that was on the original. I, I think that. And, and I'm sure Sylvia can probably explain it because she's so much closer, but I, I, for one of the renderings, it was kind of taking the middle of the old gate has kind of a, a little design that goes up it. And I think they were going to try and transpose that onto either side of the columns that hold the gates. Uh, I think in the old days, they did have more of a, it was a ball kind of on top of that, uh, which were then given over to Acton. But uh, so I think it's, it's not an exactly reproduction of those balls, but it was more of capturing the middle of the gate. But I'll let Sylvia speak to it because I know she's so much closer to the to the information. Okay. I'm just going um, to share my the, yeah. the presentation real quick. Can everyone see that? Yes. Yeah. So this is the original. So at the moment there is no, there's nothing on top of the gate. And once the, I think once those letters go up, we will see whether it, whether we even need to have something there or not. Okay. If you go on to the watercolor drawing, you'll see that um, I had suggested maybe doing those kind of things, which were on the original gate, they were those little squirrely things on the top of the pillars was a pattern that was in the original gates. Um, but I think they're slightly too big in that drawing, um, even though it's a representation. But it could be that once the lettering is there, because the gates these days are much more contemporary looking, we may not need anything on top of the gates. And I think that yeah. rather than get Hammersmith to, to make those now, I think that's a decision that the cemetery could committee and ourselves could discuss later. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Sylvie, thank you very much, but I'd like to also offer one uh, note of caution, and that is if you, if you look right underneath the uh, metal bar that has the word Sleepy Hollow, there's some, some uh, type of decorative um, ironwork that's hanging down, and um, I would uh, you know, think it would be best for your uh, contractor to be aware that um, snow gets plowed up to these uh, gates uh, periodically. And it's not like the snow plow hits the gates, but the pressure from the snow plow, I, uh, unless they're very, very, uh, you know, thick and held in by a mortise and tenon, I, I think it's possible that those things might get broken off by the pressure of the compressed snow uh, hitting them. So that's something that the, the contractor should be aware of as far as um, the, the type of um, things that the gates will be subjected to. Thank you, Leo. I do think that that bottom bar, because the bottom bar is going, that sorry, the bottom, the, the bar that's going to support the letters, um, because it is supporting the letters, I think that will have to be replaced with something a little thicker or more substantial or deeper at least. Mm -hmm. And if it is, because those finials will actually be individually made and then bolted into the bottom of that. So right. I think if, if they were to come off, they would be, you know, very simple to bolt back on again. You know, they're literally just be screwed up from underneath. Oh, um, right. Or, well, I'd have to talk to Hammersmiths to, to completely understand how they are going to... Um, structurally make it um right yeah but thank okay. you for that that's a good point to bring up with them well you know i'm one to, i'm not a politician so i can't take credit for this it was tish who talked about it because she drives the plow ah 
Well, I was going to say, well, if we have such a beautiful gate, perhaps the person driving the plow would be a bit more careful. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, oh. he doesn't always drive the plow, and that's what the problem is. Yeah. You know, yeah. when he gets overwhelmed, someone who's not familiar with it ends up accidentally just pushing the snow up up to it and could easily break those off. So maybe uh, when you order the gates, get a couple of box full of extras because we don't know how they'll hold up. That's a good point. Thank you, Leo. You're welcome. Okay, is there any uh, more discussion on this item? Uh, yes, uh, Leo, this is Rod Rydell uh, speaking. First of all, I wanna echo Brian's uh, comments. I thought the presentation was excellent and I really appreciate uh, the extraordinary amount of uh, work that went in and research that went into it. Um, I, uh, I agree with, uh, with Brian that it's probably best, and, and with Sylvie, that it's probably best to defer uh, this, uh, the um, uh, finials on the top of the post for this time. So I would move that the committee endorse the proposal without the finials and, and make a decision about the finials at a future point, uh, but for a different reason. Um, based on, uh, uh, Kevin, based on your team's presentation at our last committee meeting, I learned about the original um, uh, Pritchard Gate, and I'm, I'm very interested in exploring whether or not we can restore uh, the globes on the post of the original uh, of the Pritchard Gate, and in which case I'd like to see if we, whatever we put on the top of those posts, we could match with uh, uh, with uh, uh, the, the posts at the uh, at the knoll, so I'd like to just hold off on that uh, pending an investigation to see if we could have something that would be consistent with both. So that's Good. my my proposal to the committee that we endorse this with enthusiasm and just ask the friends to omit the the finial uh, in the presentation that they take to the town and and whoever else they need to take before they get final approval. Thank you. That Thank sounds you. good, Ron. Any more comments? Then I would say that let's make a, someone could make a motion and second uh, to accept the gift uh, with the caveat that the uh, finials not be included at this time. So who wants, on uh, the post, on the posts, yeah. On the post. did, did we want to talk about the bollards as well? Uh, or did we want to do two separate uh, motions? Well, Kevin wanted two separate. Um, I, I think I think that's what Kevin was asking for, is two separate activities so they can get the paperwork started if we don't get both of them done tonight. So I think that's what he's not, uh, what he asked for. Is that correct, Kevin? Well, I just wanted to give... Uh, more more information on the bollards before you 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 take it to a vote. Okay, how's this for an idea? Let's go now on to the bollards because we all know that uh, Rod has uh, ha has some language he'd like in the acceptance. We can vote on that. We can vote on on uh, these things after the next presentation. Does that make sense? Okay. Can I ask a right. question? Uh, when I when I talk to Hammersmiths. Will I and and tell them about this vote? Will we be including the small squiggly things that come down, or, which I think is included in their estimate, or will I be telling them um, to hold off on that and maybe give us a different estimate without them? May I respond to that, Leo? Uh, my my proposal, Nancy, was just simply to. A hold off on the finials that are on right. top of the the, uh, the the stone posts. Okay. Not okay. not the finials that are below the letters okay. of the sleepy hollow. Those. Keep those in the estimate. Keep, keep everything else except okay. for for the finials on the stone posts. Great, great. And that's, they are that's, making that's the sample good. letter now, so I will get that. I'm going to go pick it up, and I'll bring that to you whenever I get it. Great. great. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, Nancy. Thank you. Sounds good. All right, so so let let's now just discuss the uh, the second part, which is the bollard uh, installation. I, I apologize. I should have acknowledged that uh, Nancy is the one who is doing the legwork on getting a sample letter letter for us. So thanks for bringing that up again, Nancy. Uh, I ran the risk of sending you folks more paper, but I thought it was important. Uh, 
after our last meeting uh, and in, in the correspondence that Justine was uh, uh, mo most uh, courteously uh, and forwarded to you from the 18th of February, we found out that um, we can do better on the bollards with something called iron armor. armor. There, there uh, as I described in the, in the correspondence, it is a, um, a finish that uh, is environmentally friendly. It is graffiti, chemical, UV, and weather resistant, and comes under warranty for cracks, peeling, or discoloration. So we immediately uh, talked to them, or Sylvie talked to them, and found out that the color that we had originally proposed and was had some support does not, in fact, uh, allow for that iron armor to be put on. So the company had suggested choosing a color that would uh, hold, that would accommodate such a protection. Uh, our goal, obviously, is to is to provide the gift. Uh, to the town and to the cemetery that would keep those bollards um, in excellent shape, uh, worthy of the uh, monument that they are um, protecting, if you will. And uh, having had experience with middle school learners, we want to keep any middle schooler away from there from getting graffiti onto them. So our recommendation is that you consider that we use black for the color of the bollards. Black would be the color that would uh, uh, allow that armor to be put on. And we are willing uh, as the Friends of Sleepy Hollow uh, to pick up any additional cost that might be tied in with uh, the um, uh, extra protection, that, that armor protection and also uh, on the warranty. They, they offer a five or 10 year warranty we think that's a viable, both viable options. And the, uh, our group would look at that and, and decide uh, in terms of finances, which one of those we should fund. So those, that is the extra, uh, the additional information, if you will, on the bollards. And we, we ask for your, your deliberation on that and hopefully your consideration that we go with black, uh, go, for the, go for the protection that gives all those fine features and that we certainly incorporate into a five or 10 year warranty. Okay, uh, Kevin, I have a, a question. I'm not sure I got all of this, but the ballers themselves will still be made out of either uh, iron or aluminum and this armor, armor all, whatever the, the finish is, is the only difference in, in, um, in your uh, presentation from last time. Exactly. And, and we are, we are, if memory serves us correctly, I think we're all talking about iron ones versus aluminum. I, I see Brian nodding and I think that is, that is yeah. the way in which we'd like to go versus the aluminum. I think they, uh, it, the way Sylvia presented it, uh, it the, the company, uh, her full knowledge of working with the company said they, they are, uh, they're the, they're the good ones to work with, if you will, the, the ballard. But uh, Sylvie, do you want to add anything to that, to either one of those points? Um, no, that's exactly it. Um, the, st the statutory bronze color just does not come in that finish. And when you're laying out that kind of money, um, it's, I think it's, and, and considering most of the other bollards are black anyway, I think, mm -hmm. Um, I think it's, it's a good option to go with. I think it's uh, more long-term thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. This is, that was a great, a uh, lot of work and a good presentation. So I think we're, unless anyone has more questions, I think we're ready to take a vote on this. Okay. So let us, um, Let's get a motion on um, the, the first item um, to accept the, uh, the, the gates uh, with, without the uh, finials. Is that what they are? However you pronounce it, those things on the top. Uh, does someone want to make a motion for that and then and get a second? Uh, Leo, if you don't mind, let me, let me take a stab at the, at the first. Um, sure. So I move that the cemetery committee um, uh, gr gratefully accept and endorse uh, the uh, friends 
uh, proposal uh, to uh, add Sleepy Hollow uh, to the gates of the uh, no. of the of the knoll. Thank you. Sorry, I there all the time. I can't <laughs> understand why I went into brain where. Uh, so uh, with uh, and it, and at this time to exclude the finials on the top of the stone columns uh, until a later decision can be made. So. That's, that's the proposal for the, the gates. And then I would just add, since we're gonna have one vote, I would just add that we accept the proposal of the, likewise accept the proposal of the friends uh, for the uh, bollards at the Melvin Memorial uh, to be uh, constructed of iron and using the uh, iron armor uh, finish coat uh, as proposed uh, in this most recent letter uh, that was provided to the uh, cemetery committee. And it's a two-part uh, proposal. Do I have a second? Huh? Second, second. Brian. Right. Okay, great. Brian was second. Good, good work. Okay, so here we go. Everybody, buckle up your seatbelt. I'm going to do a roll call on this now. Brian Davidson. Aye. Rebecca Purcell. Aye. Rod Rydell. Aye. Jerry Susie. Aye. Leo Carroll. Aye. And the ballers have it. Okay, we're on to the next item. And thank you very much. Um, first of all, the presentations were great and, and um, a very, very nice gift to the town of Concord. So thank you, uh, Sylvie, and everyone on the Friends for all the, the effort and work you did on this. We really appreciate it. So thanks. Thank you. May, may we also say thank you for the, the rich discussion we had and also uh, for the uh, unanimous uh, approval assent. Uh, I, I took Mr. Rydell's suggestion from the last meeting and I kind of warned uh, the interim town manager that this may be coming. And I had a very warm response from her. She's anxious to hear the results of today's assent, which I will get to her the first thing tomorrow morning and we will go forward with uh, looking for select board approval. So thank you, each and every one of you. Thanks. Okay, um, item D3, it is lot repurchase, Steinman family. We will need a motion and a second and a vote to agree to the lot repurchase. So I think, uh, Tish, will you lead us on this? Yes. Uh, so it's very simply a two grave lot that's unoccupied. Purchased by John Barry Steinman um, following his death, his wife, sole heir, has chosen to sell that lot back to us for half of our current rate, $2,200. Hmm. Okay, so does someone want to make a motion? Uh, one, qu one question, where is it located, um, Tish? In the Pines. In the Pines. Yeah. Okay. So I'm happy to make a motion that we accept the repurchase lot of the Steinman family. I second it. Okay, here we go. Roll call. Brian <laughs> Davidson. Aye. Rebecca Purcell. Aye. Rod Rydell. Aye. Jerry Susi. Aye. Leo Carroll. Aye. Okay, that was pretty easy. All right, now, <laughs> item D4, mausoleum concept plan review and approval um, of the Napoli family lot. This is a discussion only and uh, no vote needed. And I think um, Tish, is, this is yours. This is not me. I can introduce you, I think Kelly Pearson is probably here. Okay. Um, Kelly Pearson is a representative for the Lemonster Monument Company, and they're the monument company proposing the building of the mausoleum. Okay, could uh... yeah. like Elio, I can I can uh, I can outset a couple of um, other notes. Also, so we met. There was a there's an interested family, um, the Napoli family that we we met with a month or two ago. Um, showed them the mausoleum lots in the cemetery. They're interested in, in purchasing one. Um, we did issue them a letter stating that we would hold the lot that they have interest in uh, for a few months while we work out kind of the process and procedure for moving forward, so that they give them them time to kind of to work with 
um, their architect and engineers to come up with the concept plan, bring it forward to this committee for review, uh, potential approval, and then uh, kind of work through the process. Um, I will state that this is uh, this is the first time uh, in, in ever. I think that the town is putting you know building a mausoleum in the cemetery. There, there's one the Pope tomb that was installed. Um, what year, Tish? In the 30s. In the 30s. So it's been, it's been a long time since you know uh, since one was one was constructed. Um, this is obviously the first time that we have them with these you know that we'll be working on this through this process with these new lots that the that the committee created. Um, a few months back. So we're kind of working through that. There's going to be, you know, I'm sure a few reviews at the committee's level. Um, but, you know, uh, we included copies of the of the concept plan that was provided to us um, in the packet for committee review over the weekend. And um, you know, we, we've looked at those as well. And obviously this is the kind of the first time that we're, we'll have kind of a discussion also with Kelly and her team um, on some of uh, in our feedback and how we see the roadmap kind of working out moving forward in this process. So with that, Kelly, I'll turn it over. Hi, how are you? I'm Kelly from Lemonster Monument Company. Um, so yeah, pretty much, I mean, we have a family that had contacted us a couple months ago, you know, from the area looking for a cemetery to place a family mausoleum um, in. And, you know, we gave them some recommendations of cemeteries. They checked out some different, different cemeteries and ultimately they really liked uh, the Sleepy Hollow what they saw so you know we kind of drew up some plans for what you know style monument they were looking for kind of the size they were looking for they're looking to be able to place um eight niches or eight eight crypts crypt, crypt, sorry crypts. eight crypts um in it so you know i think you guys have copies of all the plans and then the style mausoleum that they're looking for Uh, okay, um, Aaron, did you want to put those? Uh, do you have a copy of the plan so you can put on the screen? I can I can pull it up if you need me. Oh, to okay. okay. <laughs> Hold on a second. This is one of those awkward moments where we just look at each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <clears throat> Somehow screen share. Okay. Justine, can you start with the last the last slide? Perfect. Yeah, that one right there. Perfect. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh. And this would be up in the knoll. And um, I, I guess uh, the, the question I have is, is what is what's the height of this? I I don't um, I don't have the information right in front of me. But is it how tall is thirteen it? feet seven inches? Well, seven and nine sixteenths inches. Much oh, okay. Short. 13 feet, seven inches. All right. Well, this is, uh, this is very nice. And um, I, I don't think we have, we, there's no need for us to, uh, uh, to take a vote or anything like that on this, but um, does anyone um, want to talk about this or Christina, any more discussion? We lost the, we lost the slide. Should we see your desktop there? <laughs> What's that? Can anybody else? Lost. Yeah, I, I don't see the presentation. Yeah, I can I can share. I can put it up. Let me let me. That's fine. I'm just gonna I'll share real quick and. Um, Sorry I, about that. I was trying to find a better copy. Can everybody, can everybody see this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Kelly, I don't know. Do you want to go through the 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 concept plan? Quickly and kind of yeah. give an overview. So I'll start with slide uh, drawing number one of the concept deck here. Okay, so I'm going to pass this along to my husband, whereas he's the one more for kind of like you know all the measurements and everything else. So his name's Bob Pearson. I don't know if you can see this or not. Hi everybody, can you see me? 
know. Yes. You can, Bob. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, so really, I kind of want to, so nobody has questions right off the bat because I can go through it and give you all the sizes, the dimensions, um, you know, specs for like the foundation, if that's what you're looking for. I just want to be clear and don't want to drag it on for longer than, you know, we okay. need. Well, but maybe a, I'll ask a question, Bob. Yep. As, as everything that's in the proposed drawings, it looks like, you know, it, it looks, it's a very nice, it's a very, you know, reserved and uh, design. Uh, very classic design. Uh, are all of the dimensions, the structural elements, or are all of these essentially standard, you know, in terms of depth of the foundation, the reinforcements, the thickness of the walls, everything else that you propose here? Is there anything that is atypical from what one would do for a typical mausoleum? Nope, these are all standard procedures. Um, the foundation plan, basically, what they um, specify is a foot below frost level. So that's, you know, five feet is what kind of New England, it doesn't go that deep anymore, but that's the standard when you're doing a granite building. Um, and then all of like the pinpoints and anchoring, that is all standard. So there's nothing out of the normal on that end. And um, when it comes to the thickness of like the granite and the walls, the walls are a little bit thicker than what a standard mausoleum would be. Typically they'll go with eight inches, but we stayed with a 10 inch because that's what you guys had um, in your specs for the cemetery board. So that is really the only thing that is um, not normal when it comes okay. to them. Um, it's standard stained glass with a protective outer coating, uh, bronze door. Uh, there's locks on the door. You guys receive keys. You also receive the keys for each niche on the inside, each crypt, because there's granite panels that cover each one. Have you guys ever seen mausoleums before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The inside and everything as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, standard plans. And they're all preliminary. I mean, they're pretty much right on point, size, dimensions, everything like that. Um, but when it says a concept drawing at the bottom, think minor, minor things change, like where they put their anchoring pins. Um, so that's kind of why they put the concept drawing on the bottom, because that could, you know, change a little bit just for anchoring the walls together and things like that. So well, <clears throat> uh, Rod, any more questions? No, no more questions. Uh, Bob, thank you very much. Appreciate yeah, you're it. You're welcome. Um, yep. And then, did you guys see the granite colors? Do you, uh, does that yeah. matter at all? Or? The darker. Fire. Yeah, so there's yeah. two different types of granite. They're both, you know, quarried in the United States. One's a berry gray, um, which is a very standard gray, which you guys have all over the cemetery. Um, and then the front is um, American black or gem mist that's quarried out of Pennsylvania. And they're both, you know, very high quality granite, so there will be no, you know, no issues with things breaking down or deteriorating over time. So there's, that, I know that's been another question we've, you know, been asked in the past on the quality of the granite. Well, you know, I'd like, thank you very much. Leo, Leo, may I ask a question? Hello? Yeah, we lost Leo, so, uh, so Jerry, go ahead. I think it looks fans has any comments. I think we Leo? move on to the next item. Uh, yes, Leo, Leo. Jerry, Jerry has a question. May I have, may I ask a question? Uh, I have three questions. Okay, um, sure, I, yeah. I want to verify, this is uh, for a mausoleum lot on the Knoll, right? Not near the Pope, not near the Pope mausoleum, but on the Knoll, number one. Um, number two, it sounds like you have a copy of you know, the from the cemetery regulations, kind of like the setbacks and all that. So yep. that that yep. sounds good. Uh, my third question is just: Is the family a current or former resident of Concord? So the daughters are current residents of Concord. Yeah, and yep. the way it is, so um, the two daughters, mm -hmm. two daughters live in Concord, and they're making it big enough for eight crypts. Mm -hmm. So the it would be the whole family would be able to reside. You know. In, uh, in the mausoleum. Thank you. Yep. So, if there's no 
I had a few other, just uh, other questions. So what about, uh, so can you describe that door? Is it clear? And uh, it looks like there's a stained glass window. Just curious of uh, if the orientation, you know, with the sun, is it gonna, you know, uh, will light be coming through and then coming through the stained glass window and through the door uh, to other areas of the cemetery? Uh, no, that typically doesn't really happen. Uh, it might, like, it all depends on the rise and the fall of which way the mausoleum is facing. They would like it to face the front gate, like towards the entrance. So the driveway, when you come in the gate, they would like the front door facing the road. I don't know if that was discussed. Yeah. yeah. Could you, I'm sorry, could you explain that? So would it be, so Bedford Road is the main road that goes through yep. there, is that? When they you want take it facing up. Bedford Road or the driveway? Uh, the driveway coming in. Yeah. Facing the driveway. You're leaving, yeah, yeah, facing the driveway coming in. Because I think you guys have four reserved lots over there for mausoleums. And they would like theirs, you know, so as you pull in, you're able to see the front, the front of the mausoleum. Yeah. And will you be providing a, any landscaping plan? And I, I know these are just kind of conceptual photos and pictures, yeah. but I think this is like a two. Yeah, no, they definitely. Well, like we're kind of just getting through this process first, and then once approved, uh, then they would you know start figuring out. Probably be in works with Tish and whatnot to um, figure out what kind of landscaping you would like to provide. You know, whether it's some trees, shrubs, because um, we have all the sizes that you can't, you know, you can't go over six feet, I think, in the front oh, yeah. or something yeah, along those lines. But yeah, they are, they are fully, you know, ready to just, you know, cater to whatever you guys want for um, landscaping. Yep. Terrific. Well, it, it does look very nice. So, so uh, good luck. We look forward to seeing it. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you. Any more comments? Yeah, Leo, Aaron here. So if there's, if there's no more comments from the committee or questions uh, from, I guess, uh, uh, from, from Bob or Kelly, the, the process that we're going to be, I think, mean, moving forward, like I said, this is the first time that we're, we're, we're going through this of selling a mausoleum lot, constructing one on, on property. Um, I've had some initial conversations with a member of the building department of what's going to be required. Um, there's going to be, you know, building permits that are required. Obviously, these plans are concept, so we're going to work with them to, you know, get, um, you know, final construction, detailed construction drawings that are stamped by a structural engineer. Uh, we're going to be having our engineering department work with a third party contractor uh, engineering firm to, to do a, essentially a review of the drawings, um, kind of oversee construction as we move forward. I'm kind of, so we're going to be working all that out as we move forward um, in this process. But what I think what we would need, and I think what Kelly and Bob are looking for is, is in the family is, in, is a, a, an approval essentially of the, at least the conceptual plan. So they feel comfortable that they can move forward with the investment of, of, of creating the, the detailed construction drawings, reaching out to a contractor to, um, to get, you know, solicit pricing for actual construction, move forward with that process. So this is the first step presenting the concept plan, which is what the, the committee has in the packet um, to the committee to make sure that the committee feels is, is comfortable with you know the colors the, the you know the concept conceptual design the initial landscape and the placement and if, and if the committee approves that we can move forward with the process so i'm not sure if you know there's no more questions that the committee wants to 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 make a motion to approve that now or if you want to you know a month to think about a week this committee only meets monthly um we could hold a special meeting um just for this item if needed so i kind of leave that up to you know members of the committee and the chair to Maybe you want to discuss how you'd like to move that forward. And... Well, well uh, is, is there a straw vote that we could take that's a little less formal than a, and an official official vote, but that supports that gives you know uh, folks a clear sign of our approval or not approval? I mean, why that? All this work has been done for the last couple of years for mausoleums. Now we have one. I don't think there's. Uh, I, I don't see why we would want not to grant them to just build it. Well, I, I think we, we would need, you know, I think we have, we don't have, like I said, we don't have, we don't have any building permit. We don't have uh, any final detailed construction designs in hand yet. We don't have those, those, you know, there needs to be a contract in place, um, insurance for the contractors, bonds that might be required because this is being constructed technically on town property, the cemetery's town property, right? Um, they haven't yet bought the actual, uh, mausoleum plot yet, obviously, because, you know, they're not going to buy something when they're not going to get an approval on what they want to build, right? So um, I would say, you know, step-by-step -step process, 
the committee might want to consider approval of a, like a concept level so that the, the family and the and Kelly and Bob, the designers can move forward with their, their design process so we continue to yeah. continue to work work through it. Yeah. This is a little bit of a lengthy process to, you know, creating this mausoleum and things. So you will get drawings as time goes on. Uh, so from start to completion, you're looking at about a year before it's actually built. Even ready to be. Yeah. yeah. So within that time, you know, any plans that we get, we can obviously forward to you guys for approval before anything is, you know, cut and done. And then also with the foundation, the groundwork um, that we would hope to get, you know, within, you know, before fall time to place in, you know, on the ground. So there's plenty of time for it to cure. And once the building is ready to be installed, that is, you know, done. So there's some time. Jerry? Yeah. Yeah, Leo. Uh, so I'll I'll make a, a stab. So I think conceptually, you know, given that we've confirmed that um, qualified based on current residents, um, that we do have specs, that we do have regulations that apply that uh, they're aware of. Yeah, I think based on that, we can. I, I propose that we send a clear message, a vote that okay, okay to take it the next step. They're working with the appropriate people in the town. Sounds good so far. So I'll make that okay. as a motion. I'll second. Okay, here we go. Everybody, once again, uh, Brian Davidson. Uh, What's that? I didn't hear you. Aye, aye, yes. Aye, okay, all right. Rebecca good. Purcell. Aye. Rod Rydell. Aye. Jerry Susie. Aye. Leo Carroll, aye. Okay. This this we we think like a group. Well, we got our heads all together on this. So this is good. So thank you very much for your presentation. I personally think it's a beautiful, you know, drawing, and I think it'll be a, a good addition to the knoll. So uh, thank you. And uh, let's now move on. I do on. have one question, please. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt, but I do have one question. Yeah. Um, when it comes to contractors. Is there any specific insurances you guys would like us to provide or how would all that kind of come about? I mean, because we have contractors that we use on a kind of frequently regular basis, but I just want to know, you know, we have all of our ducks in a row. So, you know, we'll provide you the insurance coverages and all that stuff come time. So Bob, you will work directly with, with myself and Tish on this project. Okay. So I will, I will call you tomorrow and yep. um, we'll, we'll, we can discuss all of that outside of the meeting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Just one last question. Now, uh, the person who's going into this, are, are their remains, are they, are, well, are they in an urn right now? No, no one has passed. Okay, I'm thinking a long time in the on-deck circle. Okay, so yeah. good. Right. <laughs> yes, yeah. Thank this you. is all pre-needs, pre-planning, yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. You're okay, You're great. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... Um, uh, where are we? Oh, yeah. Landscape and ground cover subcommittee presentation and Rod Rydell, take it away. Uh, okay, uh, Justine, could you go ahead and put up the, the slides from uh, for that? Appreciate that. Sure. Give me one second. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Justine. So um, thanks very much, Leo. So this, uh, these slides are essentially the same as the slides that I presented last um, at the last meeting. Uh, I didn't ask for an action or a decision on the part of the committee because it was the first time you had seen the slides. Well, you've had the presentation, had a chance to think about it. Uh, today, when I'm coming um, uh, uh, to uh, this committee is um, to request an endorsement of the proposed actions um, uh, and very specifically uh, to talk about the, the, uh, the, spe the specific ground cover and tree projects uh, for uh, uh, 20, uh, calendar year 2022. So if you go to the second slide, um, Justine, 
Um, there are uh, three uh, identified in green. There are three areas um, that are proposed to, to be at the top priority of uh, areas to have the ground cover restored uh, in, the, in this coming calendar year. Uh, they are the same locations as were proposed last time and for reference in yellow, those boxes 21-1, 21-2, and 21-3, those are, the, those are the areas that were restored uh, by Tish and her colleagues and contractors uh, in, in, um, in, in 2021. So that's the first uh, that we would say uh, to, the, to the department that uh, depending on the availability of uh, budget funds, uh, that it would be used uh, to, uh, to uh, restore the ground cover in these three areas. That would be the top priority for whatever monies are available for restoration uh, in 2022. And similarly, in the last slide, number, uh, number three, if you could advance that, uh, there are um, 22A, which is uh, the, the, the request is to remove the nine diseased hemlock trees I'm not sure actually that we have funding that can achieve that, uh, but whatever ones we remove, we'd like to replace with an appropriate tree. So we may only be able to do two or three of these trees in 2022 based on budgetary limitations, but that this is the, um, this is the priority uh, uh, for the request for uh, uh, 2022. So that's my proposal that, um, that we endorse uh, these priorities for ground cover and tree uh, replacement um, for 2022. Okay, Rod, that looks, that looks really good. Do we have any uh, comments or questions for discussion on this? I, I would like to um, just bring one thing up and I believe that the uh, friends had um, had some money that was to be allocated for the um, the hemlock replacements at the bottom of um, Authors Ridge. Is Tish? Is that is that correct? I, I think it was. If I understand it, someone gifted some money, uh, and they wanted you to decide where it goes. Something to that effect. Is that correct? And you said. And I'm getting ahead of myself here, but you said uh, uh, the friends will 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 be the one to handle this, or help me out on this, Tish. There's a man who's donated some money to the friends for the last three or four years for tree planting, with the caveat that I choose the trees, not necessarily the location, but um, that's a great location with those hemlocks were. <laughs> were taken down. That's a great location to put a row of trees in. Yeah. Well, the hemlocks are, they're pretty close to dead now. They've been yeah. dying for a long time. So it seems right. I, I, I don't, is it appropriate for the committee to just to say that the, um, the, the money will be used from the friends for this? Or is that, Aaron, is that, is that appropriate? Well, we are, we are, we do have money in the budget for tree planting specifically. Um, and okay. The friends have have provided a donation to the town already, which um, was deposited to the townhouse last week, uh, the week before for tree planting. So. Okay. We do plan, plan on replacing trees in this in the cemetery this season. We, you know, I'll work with Rod and with a plan, and you know, that's some committee wishes to do um, for the locations. But we haven't we haven't finalized our tree. And then we've only started talking about our, our spring planting plan as of right now. Okay, so does someone does someone want to um, to put forward a motion on on this, and and then we'll get a second. No, I'll, I'll make the let me make the motion. Uh, I would like to. I'm requesting that the committee uh, endorse the priorities as uh, presented in in this presentation of the areas uh, that are listed as 2022 priorities for. Uh, ground cover restoration and for tree replacement. And, but, you know, budget allowing that these are the items that we would take care of in 2022. Do we have a second? 
second with a question. Oh, okay. Um, does that include the um, uh, the monies that have come in from the friends that are already, so that it's budgeted for the trees? Maybe I'm getting too dense here. That may, well, that may uh, Rebecca, that may allow, instead of one or two trees to be done, it may allow four or five trees to be done uh, using that designated money. So okay. that's a great question. It's a great question. And I'll follow up to the question with, to Aaron. The money that was donated by the friends uh, to the town and then deposited, did that go right into the cemetery fund, uh, Aaron? Is that where it got deposited? I believe it went into the cemetery account, yes. Okay, okay, great. So it's, it's kind of an earmarked donation. I wasn't aware that yeah. people could do, could do that. So that's great. <laughs> Okay, so we've had the motion and the second, and it's getting late. So I'm going to say, let's do a roll call. Brian Davidson. Aye. Rebecca Purcell. Aye. Rod Rydell. Aye. Jerry Susie. Aye. Leo Carroll. Aye. Okay, great. We're on a roll here, folks. Okay, so um, the next thing, and, and Rod, thank you very much. That's really good. It was very, very clear. And um, uh, I, I'm uh, I'm glad we're going in in this direction. So thank you. Okay, uh, now item D six warrant article discussion. Okay, warrant article discussion. Articles forty six and forty seven. Um, they have to do with the um, the old railroad uh, reformatory trail uh, in back of the cemetery. It's not on cemetery property. So. This is a discussion and there's no vote needed. So um, could I, uh, uh, would, would the person who wants to talk about article 46 go first? Well, I, I'm happy just maybe just talk a little bit about it since we've kind of been looking at the borderlands uh, there recently. I, I think that, um, you know, obviously the reformatory branch isn't part of the cemetery, but it, it does have a potential impact. Uh, we have several trails that go through uh, the cemetery lands that connect with the reformatory branch. And it has probably been, you know, one of the ways uh, bicycles uh, come in to the cemetery. And, and of course we've had you know, multiple discussions on, uh, on bicycle usage inside the uh, cemetery. I think that uh, the select board is going to be making, you know, recommendations um, of whether they support or don't support or just neutral on different articles in mid-March. I think so, you know, we as a committee, I think, have, a, you know, a duty just to kind of look at these articles and decide, you know, do we want to make any recommendations to the select board that, or, or opinions on that? Uh, I think uh, Article 46, uh, citizens petition, you know, for the feasibility study. Uh, I'll give you my view of, of, of what I, I think. So, you know, this person's particularly uh, looking to do a, a, a study to, uh, to, to fund a study that will look at drainage and improvement to the trail, primarily on uh, mobility and accessibility. Uh, and I think that some people in the town feel as though uh, this may be a first step to creating a, a paved bike path uh, in this area. And I think Article 47 uh, is really is a citizen's petition. And, and I see the citizen here today. So happy uh, during public comment to give him an opportunity to speak. But I think uh, this petition is really just to uh, keep the status quo of the reformatory branch trail with, uh, you know, with a review to make some modest um, improvements to the trail, but to, to by and large, uh, have the town keep it uh, in its current and natural state. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not making a recommendation that we, we support any one of these articles or are negative to any of these articles, or, but I think just as a group, we should decide that if we want to have a voice on that knowing that there could be impacts to the cemetery uh, with these two articles. Okay, so <laughs> I guess, so um, what is it you're asking for? That we take oh. a vote on this or? 
or that we Bob have a board? Huh? Uh, Leo, I, yeah. just, uh, let me add a few comments. Okay, okay, so I'm new new to the cemetery committee, but I, and I, maybe this is a, an impolitic statement to make, but based on everything that I've heard over the last year, we don't want a, a paved bike trail adjacent to our cemetery. We don't want to make that have more bicycles that can ride through the cemetery. And Brian is spot on in saying that there are trails. Heck, the the reformatory branch trail guide at the visitor center marks the trail on uh, uh, you know the, the branch trail and using the same markers takes those markers and puts them right through the cemetery so it's no it's no surprise that people on bicycles feel that it's quite appropriate to go through you know through the cemetery as part of a bike trail but we don't want that because we don't want people you know basically uh, well maybe inadvertently, but, or maybe worse, but desecrating graves by, by riding their bicycles over uh, graves and, and disturbing people who are grieving, you know, for their loved ones. So um, in this, you know, in this, in this case, um, if somebody were to put, make an, a motion to that as a committee, uh, we would recommend a, a vote of no on uh, article 46, or, or if no motion or a vote of yes on Article 47, I would be prepared to support either one of those. So that's, I, and I'm sorry, maybe this is not a, an appropriately politically sensitive way to put it, but for heaven's sakes, we don't want people riding on graves. And that's, and that's, that's and, and we have, we, you know, it, it seems like as a committee, we've tried for a year to come up with signage that would say it politely to people, like get off the graves, yeah. like you don't belong there. And, and, and I, would, I would prefer a more direct reproach. I'm sure that that's not you know, appropriate um, for a lot of people, but I mean, for heaven's sakes, um, you know, people have to be you know, reminded that you know, this is a sacred place. Rod, question? Yeah. Uh, uh, what document has the trail going through the cemetery? It's the, uh, the there. Is it the visitor center? Um, it's the visitor center and it's a reformatory branch trail guide, which I picked up about a week ago. I saw it and thought, oh, well, boy. we're going to talk about it. And there's these, you know, yellow boxes that mark the main trail and the same yellow boxes go right through the cemetery. And I, I get it. Um, maybe that is a walking trail, you know, guide. Um, but it doesn't discriminate on the trail guide what what's appropriate for bicycles and what's appropriate for pedestrians. It's just yeah. the trail. So yeah. I, I can't hold a biker, you know, to blame. You know, they look at it and they say, "Well, it, it's right here. It's map. It's marked. We should be able to go right through the cemetery." Uh, so, and it's not. And I'm um, at 99, you know, 95, 98 percent of the bikers that go through are respectful and courteous and everything. It's the one or two percent that are in a rush or they're they're not thoughtful or they're thoughtless and they're riding over graves. And, you know, the, it's a numbers game. We get 10,000 people riding bicycles, two percent, one percent of those folks are going to go over graves. And that's you know, that's that's the issue. From my perspective. Uh, Tisher, Aaron, uh, I'm curious, uh, for the um, uh, visitor center to have done something like that, wouldn't they have needed to uh, get approval? Well, this, uh, because... this is, yeah, this is, it's Concord Trails. It's a division of natural resources. It, you know, it, it's a map that's been around for quite a while, I guess. 2015 is, is the date. So it's been, it's been there. And so it's, it's, you know, it does not, it doesn't specify what's a bicycle trail and what's a pedestrian trail. So it just, it's a trail. But given that, well, given that we're discussing this whole reformatory um, uh, trail, uh, such a branch trail, um, it, it just seems to me that there should be some clarification on that uh, because it sounds to me like they are promoting um, uh, 
the bicycles going through. I mean, it is one thing to have people walking through that's appropriate. We and people do that, but um, I, I don't like the idea of having it approved um, or promoted as a bicycle uh, part of the bicycle trail. Yeah. So if if now there may be the question about um, okay. Uh, the uh, articles do not mention uh, bicycles, but um, uh, from what I've been hearing, it sounds more like a bicycle trail than just, um, a, you know, seriously, rather than just a, a, a walking trail. So uh, that, that would bother me. I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, and a lot of this has to do with the paving that is being done um, with the state and the town of Bedford right up to the Bedford Concord line. And so that's yeah. all going to be paved and that's, and that's, you know, that's going to be a bicycle uh, trail. It's an extension of the bicycle yeah. trail in Bedford. So the question is, do they link up? Look, it's a reason, it's a very reasonable thing um, if you're a cyclist to want to do. Um, but uh, the US government might have something to say about a bicycle trail going right next to the Great Meadows uh, sanctuary. and. Um, I think I, I, learned, I went to one of those transportation advisory group meetings that Justine uh, had advised us. I think I went to the December one, and I think it was Mark Galis, who is here today, who, who mentioned that you know, the, the federal government may have something to say about you know, a high, high number of cyclists going through an area that is you know, protected for nesting for, uh, for natural uh, resource and conservation. But either way, um, you know, <laughs> We're we're concerned about something that's a uh, you know that's different. It's um, anyway. I, I just I, I wanted to you know, make a point. You, everybody has talked about this, talked about it a lot at this committee, and uh, and struggled word for word over those signs, which finally came up. And we yet don't know. We don't know objectively uh, how well they're going to work. We have to find a way to, to see if, if uh, the incidents of bicyclists coming into the area and, and, and going over ground that we don't want them to go on over, you know, has decreased. We still have to figure out how we're going to measure that. But it took us a long time to get those signs, you know, set up. Yeah. Okay, there. Um, anyone else have comments on this? Jerry? Do you have a comment? Well, I guess, um, you know, as Rod noted, we've discussed this before, and I think our concern is for the integrity of the cemetery. And, you know, if there happens to be a super highway kind of adjacent to it, that's, that's one thing. We can't do much about the super highway. We, we can certainly still, you know, focus on maintaining the integrity, the integrity of the piece of property that we're responsible for adjacent to the superhighway. Yeah, it's, it, it's a good point, uh, Jerry, you know, but we may in a couple of years, uh, may be talking about fencing, you know, to, you know or, or some kind of a gating system that really prevents a cyclist from coming through or asking the town natural resources commission to change the change the map, you know, and indicate what's allowed for bicycling and what's allowed for pedestrians. So number of yeah, things are done. Sorry, Rod, didn't mean to step on you there. No, I wonder if we, want, if we wanted to open it up to, to public comment on this particular issue, the, uh, since I see there's two people that. Oh, okay, all right, let's, um, we still have to discuss article 47, but on this, uh, we've we spent a little bit of time on this. So let's give it a, a couple of just a couple more minutes and, and let whoever from the public wants to talk on behalf of Article 46 to do so. Hello. Um, oh, okay. Hi, I'm Mark Ailis. I live at 62 Prescott Road. Um, I'm the petitioner for Article 47. And um, I'm not gonna address Article 46 unless you ask me a specific question about my opinion about it. Um, but I appreciate all the comments that have been made. That's, that's great. Um, uh, let me, um, before 
since we're talking about Article 46, but I've heard some discussion, there's some facts or things um, that are, um, you know, just statements of things that might be useful. First of all, um, that uh, reformatory uh, branch map and guide, anybody can find it on the uh, uh, reformatory branch trail map and guide, can find it on the Division of Natural Resources webpage. There's a whole bunch of trail maps and trail guides, and so that would um, that's easy to access for everybody, and that'll give a real clear picture of how that's looking to you know people um, uh, looking for walking trails in the town. Um, it, it is true that the trail goes for almost one mile directly adjacent to Great Meadows, and it goes right in the middle of a lot of um, uh, uh, rare species habitat. Um, the um, one of the things uh, your committee could consider doing at some point is um, uh, uh, drafting and approving a letter to the Trails Committee uh, or some message to the Trails Committee or meeting together with the Trails Committee sometime uh, because they have the current stewardship, so to speak, of that trail. Uh, Ms. Delia Kay um, wrote a letter which uh, Ned Perry read into the Transportation Advisory Committee. I don't know if it was the meeting that Mr. Uh, uh, right, is it Rydell or Riedel? <laughs> <laughs> Rydell. Rydell was that, but but um, that basically Delia K said that um, in response to Nick Pappas, the new TAC chairs, Transportation Advisory uh, Committee chairs, statement that um, this trail has no home. Ned Perry said, no, no, and uh, uh, it does have a home. And um, Delia K, the um, Director of uh, Natural Resources uh, wrote a letter that Ned read into the transportation minutes saying that this trail is um, cared for by the Concord Trails Committee with the assistance of the Division of Natural Resources and Public Works because that makes sense, Department of Public Works. Um, so that's kind of the you know current status. I'm sure that Mr. Ka uh, you know Superintendent Cathcart can <laughs> inform you guys about some of the. The, the details of all that, but that's something. Um, there is a, on the uh, searchable on the town website, in 1995 bikeways task force study that was done at that time, it was a very comprehensive study. I haven't seen such a good study done by volunteers. Nowadays, everybody hires consultants, but it's worth reading. If you search for 1995 bikeways task force report, it'll come up on the town website. And that report was developed in response to an earlier concern about whether the Minutemen bikeway that went from Cambridge to uh, Bedford Depot, short of you know where the reformatory branch in Bedford starts on heads this way, um, that actually concluded that um, uh, let's look at all the trails in town for bikeways. And they said this particular one was best kept as, as a pedestrian path. And that was primarily, um, it states for two reasons that there were um, uh, concern about impact on rare species, and two, that the um, uh, Fish and Wildlife, uh, National Wildlife Refuge people were concerned about excess, uh, you know, not having enough capacity. They wanted to limit you know, visitors to a point where they didn't overwhelm the, the nature. And um, those two things are still true. Tomorrow night, both articles, uh, Mr. Posner's and mine, will be heard at the FinCom committee hearing, very end of it at 7 p.m. And that'll be both the um, uh, video and the presentations will be uh, on the town, posted by the town later. Let me see if there's any uh, other simple informational things. I think that's pretty okay, much let, what let I me, wanted let me, to say. Let me, just, let, me just, let me just stop. Okay, so we're done talking about Article 46. Now let's officially invite you to give us a five minute presentation on article 47. How's that sound? Okay, that's that's fine. Um, okay. If you wanna see any slides, I'll leave that for tomorrow night um, at the FinCom uh, uh, for, because it may be hard for me to kind of keep it short. But basically um, I know that, I personally know, and I have a very strong conviction. There are many, many people in town who would be very disappointed to find out that somehow this thing got um, clear cut of trees, bulldozed, leveled, and pay hard paved. The, a lot of people use it. Even even more now during the COVID time, when people are isolated from each other, people have been finding that immersion in nature 
and slowing down and kind of taking a walk um, in a natural place uh, is important. A lot of cyclists use it and they're very happy with it. We just got a letter from a woman 69 years old who says, don't change it, it's great. Um, there are places where um, it, it, uh, it is, is muddy after a rain. Um, and, uh, and there are places where it goes over little bumps and deviates. It's no longer perfectly straight. Um, it has three ownerships and doing anything you know, full scale about the whole thing, in my opinion, is gonna be extremely expensive and difficult. Um, and, and again, you can see I'm kind of veering off into the 46, 47 thing, but um, it has um, at least three ownerships. The, the part, um, and I'm not 100% sure on exactly the boundaries, but, uh, and some of this may overlap, but the part between Lowell Road and Monument Street near the North Bridge um, is, is uh, actually conservation land controlled by the National, uh, by the um, Division of Natural Resources and the, and the um, Natural Resource Commission. And um, the, the, so part of the trail is conservation land. Um, past going east towards Bedford, past the um, waste treatment plant, I believe it's just a um, kind of a, a piece of town land. Uh, but going from the waste treatment plant, and Alan would, Alan's the expert, <laughs> Alan would know, uh, from the waste treatment plant back to Lowell, uh, back to Monument Street, and then maybe to Lowell, I don't know, somewhere there, there is a uh, town um, easement or uh, right of way because there's a 48 inch uh, pumped sewer line there. Um, so anyway, so it's, it's, you know, there's a lot going on, et cetera. Um, one thing I want to point out, just another fact, is that Concord, um, I believe, has gotten their funding for paving from the Bedford Depot towards the Concord line. Um, just, um, I think it's federal money administered by Mass Department of Transportation, and they have a requirement that it must end in an ADA compliant fashion. So they don't have oh. funding to pave to the Concord line, although that's been talked about. Their town meeting fund voted, yeah, let's pave to the Concord line. They don't have funding. The 100% the plan stops about 800 feet short of the Concord town line, and it loops back to a sidewalk. It also includes the construction of an underpass under Route 62, where it in Bedford crosses under Route 62. So that's a big construction project. Um, it's going to be shut down for two years. Nobody allowed on it for the construction, I believe, and that's supposed to start in 2023. So if you hear it's coming tomorrow, it's not coming tomorrow. Um, what else? Oh, the I know that the um, Great Meadows um, authorities um, did not get involved in the Concord. I'm sorry, in the Bedford discussion. Uh, because they found out that it wasn't coming the last 800 feet towards Concord where it would touch Great Meadows. So stopping 800 feet short of Concord, there is no Bedford section of it yet that would touch Great Meadows. If it does touch Me Great Meadows, somebody would have to make these complicated plans or if Concord wants to widely develop it, you'd have to make all these plans, pay for all that, give it to the Great Meadows people and then they would, you know, the federal government would take its time and weigh in. Uh, one way or the other. So anyway, so my article really simple is just that I love the trail. I think it's beautiful. It's nature immersive. I love walking, you know, the trails. Cyclists are allowed, even though that 1995 bikeways report uh, task force study says, um, you know, keep it um, uh, primarily as a walking trail. Lots of people like it. Lots of cyclists use it. So I think keep it natural. If, if any drainage or accessibility improvements need to be done. Let's do them kind of piecemeal in one part or another with one ownership, with some public input, and in such a way, maybe we can use some volunteer help or some donations. If you get federal uh, supplied MassDOT administered money, you're, 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 you're really going down a certain path, is my opinion. So that's kind of mixing things up, but I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to give you my picture. If anybody needs any more information or can't find documents, let me know. Be happy to help. 
Okay, well, thank, thank you very much. And I'd like to open it up again for the committee members. Um, are there any questions? I think Linda might have a, a her hand raised. It would be. Okay. Thank you, um, Linda Escobedo, uh, liaison from the select board. Um, I just wanna um, restate that the uh, meeting that Mark was referring to is the public hearing tomorrow night for annual town meeting where both of these and, and other articles will be discussed. And the second thing I just wanted to comment is that the cemetery committee, to my understanding has been invited to the select boards meeting on March 28th, along with a whole number of committees in town uh, where transportation issues in town are going to be discussed. And um, given the comments that your committee's making, it would be important that you be represented there for that discussion. Well, thank you, Linda. I, I'm not aware, have we, I'm, I have not received the invitation myself as, you it know may how- have, it, it may have just gone out um, either yesterday or this morning, I'm no, not sure. Okay. All right, great. Okay, well, thank you very much. I just much. want you to be aware of it. Thank you. That, thank that's you. That's very important. That's very important. Okay, um, any other comments or questions? Well, I guess I, I just make a, a comment on 46. You know, we've talked a little bit about uh, uh, bicycles. I, I will say that citizen, you know, his position is it's not about bicycles. I think there's others in the community who, who feel that position is incorrect, that, that it is about bicycles. But I, I do think it's important just to recognize that the person who's bringing that, that petition is, it, again, really it's a feasibility study uh, just on the different things you could do with that trail. Uh, and again, you know, a lot of people feel as though uh, that, that that would lead to a bicycle trail. So, um, and so I think, I, and, and I would, you know, probably recommend that we as a committee uh, support Article 47 and, and perhaps just remain neutral on Article 46. Okay, and uh, okay. So, I, so so the, what do we, need, has the we need to do? Do we need to take a vote on something? I think this. Alan, I think Alan wants to make a comment. I don't know if you can see him yet. I can't. No. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Alan Cathcart, Director of Concord Public Works. Um, just wanted to. I think Linda. Uh, I believe it's a correction. The tack. The meeting for the select board is, I believe, March 14th. Unless I'm, you know, we're talking about two different meetings. It, it, thank you if you've got that in front of you. I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, so. it was, um, uh, Robin had sent a, a notice around. So I think you should uh, keep your eyes open for a meeting on March 14th. That's Monday, select board meeting. Thank just, you. Uh, yeah, so just want to have that in so it didn't get misdirected. And I do think, we'll say there's lots of conversations about the, the trails and it appears to be some shades of gray. And I think there's two alternatives. And I think what I'm hearing from this committee is your voice is and should be you know, represented and you know, how and when that's gonna be done. You know, can listen into the hearings, get a perspective. And at the end of the day, it's a town meeting decision. Um, and that's when a formal position needs to be made, but. And, and how long, how far off in the future is that? Oh, a town meeting will be May 1st. Okay. So you can sort of schedule maybe a, your next monthly meeting. You could potentially take a position once you have more information. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, Rod, does that, uh, wh where do we stand with you? You wanted to uh, take a vote now or do you want to wait till uh, the next, next committee meeting? I think waiting is is perfectly appropriate. I okay. shared I shared right. my perspective. That's fine. I saw Rebecca's yeah. hand. Thank Rebecca, you. did you want to? Yeah, I just I don't want to. Okay, the, so uh, uh, thank you well, for oh, the presentation. Oh, they were very good. Leo, yeah. it's Rebecca. I don't want to have the matter yeah. of the the little side matter of this map that's been drawn up by the Natural Resources Department that shows our the cemetery as part of the bike trail or wh wh whichever one it is. You know, that they, they've listed that uh, with boxes um, on their trail 
uh, brochure. I'd, I'd really like to make sure that's um, uh, amended. Okay, that's, Rebecca, that's it's actually a that, discussion. I beg your pardon? Also, it's on the internet too. And if you go out there and, you know, if you actually talk to some of the bikers out there, none of them seem to be from Concord. They seem to be from other places and they've seen it on the internet. And that's, that's why oh. they're out there. But, but um, I, I guess we'll have to turn that over to Aaron. How, how do we get this changed with natural resources? Well, I, I'll say that we have made some changes already with natural resources. I think Aaron last year talked with uh, the natural, some of the folks at natural resources. They removed some of the trail uh, mapping on that map and they've added a disclosure uh, to be respectful when on cemetery property. Is that correct there? Yeah, I, I would, I would rec yes, yes it is Brian. I, and I would recommend that uh, current committee members if they wish to get more information. We did have extensive discussions about this back in 2019 and early 2020. Committee members go to the town website, cemetery committee page, and want to read the minutes that are posted for the November 2019, December 2019, and February 2020 meetings. We had um, lengthy discussions and there was presentation um, of the trail stewards back and forth uh, about you know bicycle usage on the trails um, that about the cemetery and that, that also run through the cemetery. So you know, I don't want to kind of rehash all of that because it was hours spent on discussion. Some of these committee, current committee members were involved in those discussions, but that's probably something you might want to, if, if folks are looking to get more information on bicycle usage and trails, um, there was discussions of that. You know, I think ultimately we did, to Brian's comments, uh, we did make some changes. We asked some changes be made uh, to the mapping, and then ultimately we, we put those signs up. And that was kind of what the committee had decided to do um, and the department, it's, you know, ordered to install those signs that you see at the entrance to the trails and just within the cemetery, reminding folks to be respectful that this is an active, you know, burial ground. Um, there was a lot of discussion that resulted in that as the installation for now. So. It just seems like an advertisement, though, uh, for it to be listed in a um, brochure. I mean, people um, unaware of that brochure. Um, uh, come through and that's you know we we understand that we're addressing we've addressed that but I just don't like the idea of it being advertised as a bike trail um in the in the brochure Rebecca it's, yes, uh, Rebecca just to clarify it's it's advertised as neither it's it's not there's no mention of bicycles on this um you know in this in, in this uh, you know pamphlet it's just the trails are marked in the same manner. So anyone who was using the, the reformatory branch straight line trail would look at this and say, well, it's got the same, same markings as what the trails are through the, you know, through the cemetery. So I guess I can just go ahead and ride my bike through the cemetery. So I, I, I take your point. And Aaron, does this, from your comments, does this mean that, um, uh, that uh, the town, uh, has come up with an updated, you know, pamphlet. Is this just a question of an out-of-date pamphlet being, you know, used in the visitor center? I, I don't. I don't know what's currently uh, provided and distributed in the visitor center, Rod. But I can tell you that. So Justine just shared this screen here. This is an updated copy of the map. This is another. Um, you know, after this, yeah, after the lengthy discussions of the cemetery committee, um, there was you know letters sent out to various departments. The trails committee did update the map and you're going to see this little text box at the center uh, top of the map that says sleepy hollow cemetery is an active burial ground please use trial trails quietly and respectfully all dogs must be leashed that was added right and so this is on the website so this is an updated version this is very different from the printed version that i took from the visitor center last uh, a few days ago yeah, and I, I can't speak to I can't speak to the printed copies. But Concord Public Works is not involved with the printing of any of those maps. This is under the right. Division of Resources. Yeah. yeah, but this does not this this revised map does not explicitly state what is appropriate for cycling and what's appropriate for um, and what's appropriate for walking. It it's it's just it's silent on that on that difference. It just talks about what's the main and what's the secondary. 
It doesn't, it doesn't talk about what, you know, where cyclists should be or not be. That's all. Yes. Okay. We, right. we may want to follow up with the, uh, with the trails committee again and just talk about if they could have something that would be more explicit than what they currently put in there. Yeah. I agree. All right. I guess who's, who's going to take the lead on that? Well, how, how do you want to approach it? Do you, I mean, I guess request the uh, somebody appear in front of the trails committee or uh, have them join us at the trail uh, at our cemetery committee meeting? I think that a conversation has to start. And since I'm the one who feels most strongly about this, I guess I should volunteer, but I, my plate is pretty full right now. Um, but I'd be happy to have a phone call uh, to get the ball rolling and then hand off to, to somebody else to and ask them, how, ask the representative from the Trails Committee how they'd like to proceed with this. Uh, I mean, or, or else, or else we can do nothing, right? We can just do nothing. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens this spring and summer and whether or not people continue to ride their bicycles over graves. We put up no, the I, signs, I think, maybe that'll be enough. Maybe no, that's Rob, enough. I, I think it'd, it'd be great if you could talk to the, um, the Natural Resource uh, Committee and get, give us an update on what they have to say. I know you got a lot oh, going, yeah. but I personally would appreciate it. So we don't find ourselves in the situation where we say, hey, how'd this thing get paved? <laughs> Well, I won't talk about Article 46 and 47. I just want right. to talk about the map and if there's right. some way to discriminate between where people are encouraged to bicycle, if they're bicycling, where they're encouraged to stay as opposed to you know, not, not, not making that, you know, uh, that, uh, that restriction. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. God bless you. Thank you very much. Okay. And, um, I think we, we've run a, a long meeting today. So can we now transition into um, D7 public comments? If there are no public comments. There's one I, Mark, Mark, Mark Gales is raising his hand. Yeah, I just, I just, thank you very much. And I appreciate it. I just wanted to uh, point out too, that the um, uh, trails committee meetings um, I have I have been to a number of them, you know, not lots and lots of them, but I have heard frequent discussion of problems with cyclists uh, on various trails, not just uh, the ones going through the cemetery lane. So I think that um, if any one of you um, wanted, or if you you know, if any one of you wanted to 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 write or attend these uh, meetings and just mention that. You know, as part of the Comprehensive Trails Committee, uh, already looking at this kind of issue, how about how do we, you know, can we even restrict bicycles or not? I mean, here it's actually cemetery land; it's not town conservation land, so it's kind of different. But I just wanted to point out there already are many people concerned about it, and um, it's actually uh, nice to go to one of those meetings because you'll hear reports from all the volunteer trail stewards from all around the town and kind of get a sense of how this whole thing fits together. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Are, are there other public comments? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I we second have a second. It. Got it. Second we, it. Have, we have five seconds. Okay. So uh, um, roll call for, vote for the committee. Uh, Brian Davidson. Aye. Rebecca Purcell. Aye. Rod Rydell. Aye. Jerry Susie. Aye. Leo Carroll. Aye. And, and thank you all for saying for this and the people who work for the town, God bless you and go home and have dinner with your families. Thank you very much. <laughs> have a good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> all right.